Today on Hands On Photography, it is the summertime. It's time to get out and start shooting. Heck, it's also time to get out and start grilling and taking some amazing food photos. And I have just the guests to walk you through that awesome and easy process. Mr. Mike Lane. Now stay tuned. This is Twit. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt. This is Hands On Photography here on Twit TV. Hope y'all are doing well. I am unbelievable as always. I have the great opportunity to come to you folks each and every Thursday here on the network and share different tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer as well as a better post processor. Because matter of fact, they go hand in hand. I don't care what anybody else tells you. Just believe me on that. But this week, we're not getting into post-processing or, or, or taking uh, taking your camera out and walking you through a lab or anything like that. This week, I have a guest. I have an esteemed guest. And I'm talking about somebody that's going to get you ready for the summertime and the summertime photography, and particularly summertime grilling photography, summertime food photography, and just enjoying the act of being out and about with your camera and the awesome natural sunlight. And I'm talking about the one and only Mr. Mike Lang. How you doing, brother? Hey, and I'm doing great. So good to see you. I'm a huge fan of you, the show, and Twit, so I'm uh, honored to be here. Oh, man, he's a fan of Twit, y'all. Oh, my goodness. I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. I, I, I finally got wind of you from listening to another podcast that... Um, Actually, you listen to it as well. Uh, it's, it's called Easy Listening, hosted by Miss Gina Grad and Teresa Strasser. I love Miss Gina Grad. She's she's just so kind, and her and Mr. Andy they're just just so kind to me, and I really do appreciate them. And when they mentioned you on their show, I was like, okay, and it goes to Google, and it's Mike Lang, and then I'm like, oh man, this dude can shoot. <laughs> <laughs> this dude can well, thank shoot. You. Good grief. And not only that, you are also a author and yes. you are pretty much a brand ambassador for a certain company. But I'm not going to tell everybody about you. I'm going to allow you to introduce yourself to our wonderful listeners. So you go. Yes. No, thanks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm. Uh, it's funny. My photography journey has been a complete uh, side hustle. Uh, you know, I'm a, actually a police sergeant, uh, 25 years of service. And over, you know, gosh, 13 years ago, I started a food blog. I love photography. Uh, at the time, I didn't know what I was going to blog about, but everybody had a blog. <laughs> One day, a friend of mine had posted a picture of his dinner on the grill and said, what's on the grill? I go, ah, you know, I love photography. I love grilling. How about I take pictures and write about what I'm grilling. And that's sort of how my, my journey began. You know, it's it fast forward to today, and I'm lucky enough to do a lot of work for Weber Grills, which is who you were sort of mentioning before, and I'm known as their quote-unquote grillographer. Man, that's that's just crazy, you know? But the thing is, I, should, I shouldn't really say it's crazy because there are a lot of content creators out there right now doing exactly what you do, and it all started as a, air quotes, side hustle or just a passion project project and it just grew into something bigger because of the work that they put in i was reading your blog on um another pint please.com i believe you actually call it app am i right <laughs> uh, you both will work yes <laughs> another pint please.com i had been reading through that and i laughed at some of the the uh, story that you mentioned about getting started like you said you're you're other people had a blog and started, you know, what's on the grill. And and then uh, you, you took some um, couple pot shots at people taking some interesting food photography photos when you knew it could have been a lot better. I got to respect you for giving your friends a little bit of a hard time and throwing them a nice <laughs> little jab and saying, you know what, let me show you how this is done. I really did love that. But your website, again, it, 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 it just draws me in. And I wanted to bring you on to talk to our hands on photography listeners because it's summertime now. <laughs> yeah, I guess we just started the summertime and a lot of people are going to be grilling a lot more depending on the area that they live in. And it's going to give you ample photography uh, possibilities regarding food, 
photography and food photography outside summer food photography, that particular genre. And I've had my man, Mr. Freddie Clark on before, who's an amazing food and beverage photographer, but most of his is done inside of a controlled environment. You know, he sets up Einstein lighting and he sets up different uh, modifiers and backdrops and things of that nature. But, you know, again, it's very, very controlled. And a lot of my hands on photography listeners, you know, have mentioned to me, yeah, that stuff is great. But that light and that um, CPL that he was using, ooh, that costs a lot of money. Hmm. And I'm here to tell you, well, folks, holler at Mr. Mike Lang because he's using the biggest light of them all, the sun, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I got my start shooting in the backyard with no modifiers, no nothing, simply just hard summer light. <laughs> but the wonderful thing about shooting outdoor grill photography, especially in the summer months, is all of the wonderful imagery you get to capture. Everything from heat and smoke and steam coming off of a grill to bits of fat popping. You know, magical things you really couldn't even capture inside in a studio. And to shoot something like a grill that is, when it comes alive to me, that makes for one of the most wonderful photographs. And it's accessible to anybody in anyone's backyard. Right. Now, I, I will have to challenge you just a bit on this because... I've tried to take photographs of, of, of food sitting on a on a grill with flames mm-hmm. and things like that. And brother, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard because yeah, you have the light, plenty of light out there. And even if you're shooting, you know, closer to golden hour and the light is a little more diffused, that's great. But there's something about that flame coming up and flaring into your lens. And there's something about that, that, that beautiful smoke that comes off. And that just creates another bit of haze. And sometimes it creates a, an issue with exposure. That's a challenge. But you make it look easy. What are your tips? What, what are you doing to make this look so much easier for, for people? Well, first of all, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. But, uh, you know, number one is prepare to take a lot of photographs. You know, I may get lucky. And uh, in fact, I had a project last week I was working on. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking for just a little bit of flame and a little bit of smoke. And I might have shot that same piece of meat 50 times (laughs) just trying to get that. I mean, no joke. (laughs) It is a matter of patience and perseverance. Started out rare, ended up well done. Uh, (laughs) When it comes to a photographer like that, yeah, if I'm not feeding myself, there's a chance I may destroy the meat in the process or the vegetables or the fish. But if you're just if you're not going to eat it, prepare to just settle in for the long haul and keep shooting, shooting, shooting. And then when you go back and finally review, you're going to find that one shot where you captured what you want. And it, it takes time. It's just not one and done. But if you stay in there for the long haul, you will get there. I promise. Now, are there any other things that you consider f- from a pre- preparation standpoint beyond the actual uh, subject matter, uh, like the meat or, or the f- fruit or vegetable? Are there any other things that you consider from a prep standpoint, like a, a, a flash or, or the actual grill itself? Do you have to stage the grill a certain way? Do you deal with tripods or anything like that? Uh, Yeah, anymore, I'm almost always shooting on a tripod because Mm -hmm. what I'm going to try to do, especially, you know, it depends what I'm shooting. Something like, let's say, a steak or a hamburger is going to be a really fast cook, probably eight to 10 minutes. So I've got a small window. That means ahead of time, I want to get up my shot, figure out composition. I must always try to shoot where the sun, especially in the evening hours where that golden hour kicks in, it's going to backlight the grill. That's going to do a couple things. Number one, it's going to create really dynamic uh, light coming from whatever sort of steam or fat is coming off that meat. Mm-hmm. You really catch it when it comes in from that back or side angle. Yeah. So because it's short and fast, I want to get all that figured out first. You know, where in the grate my protein is going to go to shoot it. So that way, once things are down, I've got everything locked in. Uh, may make some exposure changes as things start to happen. Uh, but usually I'll be there from the beginning to the end and hopefully in that range of time catch what I was trying to catch. Now, this is a technical question. Are you a manual control or are you aperture priority, shutter priority? Yeah, I'm shooting almost always an aperture priority. I may go to manual if I've got some really wonky exposure issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then also I've got to keep in mind, too, what my shutter speed is going to be, because if I'm trying to capture like a lick of flame uh, or a bit of smoke that's really fast, chances are if I've got a really, you know, a, a short exposure, right. uh, I'm not going to capture it. Right. So it, it just depends on what it is. Now, the converse to that when I'm shooting barbecue, like let's say brisket or pulled pork, mm-hmm. you're talking an eight to 10 hour cook. 
So I've got all the time. You got all day to set up. And I know I'm going to eat well later, <laughs> but a lot more flexibility depending on what it is you're trying to shoot. My goodness. Now that see, that sounds more ideal for me because it gives me a larger window to get a lot of my screw ups in and get them out of my <laughs> system. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally dig that. Now I want to talk to you a bit about Weber. You know, how did, how did that come about Weber for the folks that are uh, listening or outside of the U S cause I'm fortunate enough to have some international listeners. Thank you all very much. Uh, Weber, they, they are a grill company here and, Pretty much, pretty much the top dog. Because everywhere you go, you see a Weber. I don't care what neighborhood you're in. There's a Weber in their yard, more than likely. How did you come about d- just forging this relationship with Weber and, and allowing allowing yourself to get into their, their you know their crosshairs and start creating content for them as well as yourself? Yeah, and actually, and one thing you might be surprised upon, they're actually worldwide. Uh, they have uh, spots in. Literally, almost every continent uh, and region of the world. Love it. Uh, I think I've got a buddy of mine that's in New Zealand. I kind of call him my Southern Hemisphere doppelganger. Uh, <laughs> he is a he's an amazing photographer. He's a great Weber griller, and we always kind of laugh because I'm ready for summertime, and then yeah. he's not wanting to see wintertime, and then we sort of cross <laughs> hit the hemisphere divide. <laughs> but it's it's a worldwide phenomenon. It's it's amazing. Uh, but to answer your question, uh, you know, whenever I, when I first started this, I was trying to entertain myself and maybe a few friends. I never once thought about, you know, influencers weren't even a thing on the radar. Yeah. Uh, but what I did is I uh, got a brand new Weber gas grill I've been really wanting. It arrived in this huge box. And I go, you know what? I want a picture of myself on that box. So I jumped up on it, sort of gave it a big hug, uh, <laughs> had the picture taken. And put it up on the blog. And little did I know what Weber's ad agency out of Denver at the time found the photo and, and reached out to me and they wanted to purchase it. And I'm like, you mean you can make money selling things like this? <laughs> I have no idea. So I was like, wow. And that really started a slow burn relationship now. It's been probably, that's probably 12 years ago. And uh, ended up doing a uh, video testimonial uh, commercial for them about eight or nine years ago. And that segued into uh, writing for their new blog and then taking photographs, doing short form video. And then today I'm incredibly proud that a lot of my work is seen really worldwide uh, through all social channels and on their website. I love that. I love that. And I wanted to pull up your website here. Let me see if I can hit the right buttons to pull up your website, because there's a couple images in here that I wanted to touch on just to allow you to walk through the thought process and and show people just how easy it is to harness just natural light that's outside and Mm -hmm. get yourself lined up for a beautiful shot. So let me see if I can switch it here. So we'll click this screen here and there we go. Got your website now. This particular shot right here, and everybody mm. knows that I'm a whiskey person, so I, 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 I'm not a big fan of margaritas, but this one is just absolutely beautiful. And I believe if I click on it, it takes me to Instagram. Yeah, there we go. So I'll zoom in on it just a touch here. Tell me about, you know, the thought process that went into this shot, because I see it as uh, you have a bullseye uh, subject here right in the center of it. But the depth of field is super shallow because it just really falls off immediately off of the edge of the glass and you know yes we know that these are limes back here in the background but i love that just that soft uh shallow depth of field back there walk me through setting this shot up yes thanks well i know i i love whiskey as well but this is actually a mezcal margarita so it's like super smoky okay, it may tempt you over a little bit it's, it's pretty oh, good no, i like mezcal you got me there <laughs> good well said well said thank you uh, this is one of those shots where I had no plan to go outside and shoot it, mm-hmm. but it's when you walk outside and you know you see light, you see things, and you suddenly realize, oh, I'm gonna have to take this outside. Mm-hmm. And it's wonderful. I'm in Southwest Ohio, so when we get snow, it's like a whole different set of circumstances to go shoot because you get this total different light bounce um, reflection from all these different surfaces that normally is grass and trees and leaves. Right. So I wanted to sort of catch that backlight from that sun setting down. And I know if I got it this the right angle, I'd be able to also capture that through the glass. 
And I love to shoot with the shallow depth of field whenever I can. It's not always practical for some things on the grill, but for something like this with the glass and the rim with the salt on there, I just thought visually it would be really something. And to sh set that up manually would be a challenge <laughs> and probably involve a crew to make it happen. But when you've got that natural light and everyone in their backyard has got it, you've just got to find it and map it out and know where it is and when it's going to be there. It's not that hard to capture something just like this. And now there's one more that I'd like to take a look at here. Uh, I'm a big fan of this one because of the directional lighting on this. I've mentioned in previous episodes of hands-on photography that uh, a lot of food shots, if you can get that side lighting uh, pretty much like almost 90 degrees onto the subject and get that harsh fall off on the opposite side of it, it just creates so much more mood and so much more interest in the shot. Uh, walk, walk me through this. Was that your intent was to purposely just have that side light that way or? Yeah, you absolutely nailed it. This is actually shot inside. I ended up putting a studio in the house a couple of years ago because come wintertime, I'm still wanting to shoot. And of course, outside light is gone uh, with, you know, 5.30, 6 o'clock, it's nothing left. Mm -hmm. So essentially inside, I've got a, a large constant light source that I use through um, a different number of modifiers and mm -hmm. then a flag on the fall off side. And then just a matter of finding that right angle because I'm shooting for usually Instagram and that sort of four, three ratio. Yep. Um, I know how I sort of want it to be framed to get it in there. And then it's just a matter of kind of playing with the light, playing with my focal point on the meat uh, and also how much depth of field I want where either the entire subs in focus or part of it is and uh, shoot it off. And there you go. I love this. I love this. Now it, from everything you just said, it, it, it sounds like you you definitely take time to plan these things through. And I totally respect that. The fact that you mentioned the four, three aspect ratio that Instagram tends to want you to use either mm -hmm. one to one or four to three, four to five uh, crop on it. That 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 says a lot to me, because if you can set up your your shots for Instagram that way, Instagram tends to favor you. Mm. That's the, I'll just say favor, <laughs> favor <laughs> you in the feeds and in the discovery. And it will push you up and allow more people to see your work out there. And this is, this is just absolutely beautiful. I can't oh, stop thank you. looking at it. <laughs> not going to look at it anymore because it's almost lunchtime for me. So no, I'm, I'm not going to do that anymore. Now, before I let you go, I want to, to allow you the opportunity to share some other things that you're working on and also mention, I saw something right there. On what, I want to say it's on your left oh. shoulder there. Yeah, um, actually, even yeah what, is <laughs> <laughs> what is that? What is that? No, I, I was lucky enough to author a grilling cookbook, which was released last week called One Beer Grilling. Never thought in a million years I would write a cookbook, but I was uh, wrote it, 75 recipes and 50 full-size color photographs that will hoping, hoping to get you to fire up your grill and make one of the recipes. Wait, wait, uh, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. What was those numbers again? 75 recipes? Yeah, 75 recipes and 50 of them have full-size photographs, so it was Quite an undertaking, but just a, a wonderful journey. It's wonderful to see something come to life in print. I, it's amazing. Mr. Lang, how long did it take you to get this done? That's, oh my goodness, dude. <laughs> it, was about, it was about a nine month project beginning to end. And the writing creation part of that was probably even smaller, but worked with an amazing um, publishing house and had some phenomenal editors. And it's just, yeah, I'm crazy proud of it. It's called One Beer Grilling, but uh, those you know, another pint, please. Not the best photography uh, food branded blog, but I do love my beer. A lot of recipes you can make with one beer. Others might take many more, but uh, a lot of fun. And it's a fun read as well, too, I think. So I hope uh, people enjoy it. Where do we find this book? It is available wherever books are sold. So uh, your usual big names or even if you wanted to sign copy, which I've been touched about uh, through my blog as well. Another pint, please dot com. All right. All right. Mr. Lang, this has been awesome. Quite enlightening and um, hunger inducing. So <laughs> thank you so much for your time and for joining me here on the show. I really, do, really do appreciate you um, sharing all of this information to me to help me be a better photographer, as well as helping all of our listeners and viewers of hands on photography. Thank you so much for your time, sir. An absolute pleasure. And thanks so much. All right. Hi, right, folks. That's going to do it. Thank you all for joining me each and every week here on the network. If you have any other questions, comments, feedback, anything like that, shoot me an email. Hop 
at twit.tv. Again, that's hop at twit.tv. I enjoy hearing from you and I enjoy uh, getting back to you all as soon as I can. I don't always answer them right when I get them because I'm still playing catch up on all of these messages. So thank you for all of that tremendous support. And again, if this is your first time catching the show, go ahead and subscribe in whatever podcast application you're enjoying this on, uh, whether it's Apple Podcasts or, or YouTube or Spotify. We're on all of them. Or you can just check us out on the website, twit.tv slash hop, and you'll see all of our subscription options over there, as well as all of our show notes, especially for shows like this, where I got a lot of information to share with you. All right, folks, that's going to do it. Thank you again for the support. And make sure you oh, yeah, make sure you're following me over on the social medias too. follow me on Instagram and underscore Pruitt and follow me on Twitter and underscore Pruitt as well. I love hearing from you all on the social medias. All right. Seriously. Now, that is it for this week's show. Thank you all for the support. Now, safely continue to create and dominate. Y'all take care. No ads, just the content. That's what you get when you join Club Twit. You even get extras like Twit Plus, our new bonus feed just for members, and exclusive access to the Club Twit Discord community. Join now for just $7 a month and support Twit as we continue to create top-notch podcasts you expect and deserve. Just getting started, so be one of the first to join as we build Club Twit from the ground up. You could be an early member. Go to twit.tv slash club twit to learn more and sign up now. Thanks. Thanks.